Now at 5, rain causing chaos on Valley Roadways. We do have team coverage for you as this wet weather continues. And the long-awaited designation for Abe Kwame. We have reaction from local lawmakers on Spirit Mountain. Plus, a new tool aimed in transparency in schools. A closer look at CCSD's new online dashboard. Now, this is 8 News Now, 5 at 5. Live, local, now. Another gloomy, rainy day here in Las Vegas. This is video taken in the northwest part of the valley this afternoon, not too far from Santa Fe Station. You can see it was coming down pretty steady in some parts of the valley. Right now, taking a look from our sunset tower cam. This is facing westward. You can see very gloomy, hazy, more rain and wind expected, even stronger tonight. A live look at Lee Canyon right now, where there has been a winter storm warning in effect since 5 o'clock this morning. The winter storm warning will stay in place until 5 o'clock tomorrow night. And boy, what a season it's been up on the mountain. We thank you for joining us here at 5 o'clock. I'm Denise Valdez. And I'm Brian Loftus. This wet winter weather wreaking havoc on Valley Roadways. We do have team coverage. Mary Jane Bellieso standing by live and Chief Meteorologist Ted Florindo is in the Weather Center. But first we begin with Ryan Maffey on the scene of a deadly crash that left six people in the hospital. Yeah, Brian, a lot of damage here involving a lot of cars, a lot of people. This is all happening at the intersection of D.I. and Jones. If you can pan the camera off, you can see all the different cars that we've counted, about five or six cars with major damage. If you can see that brown truck that's facing away from us, they are on the wrong side of the road. The car in front of them both have major damages to the front ends of their car. What Metro has confirmed to us so far, six people taken to the hospital. One person announced deceased on scene. They say it happened around 2.30 this afternoon, and we did a little bit of digging into this just in the past 12, 13 hours today. This is the fourth fatal car collision that we've seen here on our Valley Roads. We're waiting for more information in regards to what specifically happened, but all you can see right now is a lot of glass on the floor, a lot of police officers taking photos, and this had major impact to the traffic in the area since the uh, DI area between Red Rock Street and Jones has been closed off. That's just a block, but that has impacted traffic throughout the entire community. Coming back here to me live, we are waiting for more information from Metro on exactly what led up to this collision. In the meantime, I'm going to send it back to you guys in the studio. Reporting live near uh, D.I. and Jones, Ryan Matthew, A News Now. All right, so Ryan, as you mentioned, the wet weather is really creating some hazardous driving conditions. Mary Jane Belly, as a, continuing our team coverage, Mary Jane is live near Desert Inn and Valley View with a look at the conditions in that area. And you know, when there's rain in the forecast, that could impact your commute as the rain can cause low visibility and also affect travel time. Rain, slick roads, and fast drivers are a recipe for disaster. Nevada State Police tweeting out deadly crashes across the valley and advising drivers to slow down. According to the Federal Highway Administration, 21% of vehicle crashes each year in the United States are weather-related. Of those crashes, 73% were linked to wet pavement and 46% due to rain. You have to keep a longer distance between the car ahead of you. You have to anticipate. If you accelerate, the car will slip changing lanes, you have to do it more careful. So it's a lot of factors that people need to pay attention when they drive in rain. Victor Butnari, owner of Universal Motor Cars, says he sees more cars come into his shop after the rain. People get in a wreck, the cars are slip, slippery, and Vegas, like the asphalt, releases a lot of grease and it's, it's an increase of numbers after the rain. He recommends to maintain your windshield wipers and to double check your tire tread. Minimum on the rain, it's recommended to be the 432s, but more than that, it's recommended. The key is the tires. That's why the cars sleep, especially when they brake, when they accelerate and cause an accident. Meteorologist John Adair from the National Weather Service in Las Vegas has been busy tracking the weather and forecasting what else is to come. But it does look like even next week there's another potential uh, large Pacific system looming uh, way out beyond a week, but uh, we are looking at it. So we're not even done yet. It doesn't look like it. No, the active Pacific storm pattern continues. 
And again, as you heard with more active weather on the way, now is the time to make sure that you're double checking your tire tread and also replacing those windshield wipers. I saw at least one accident on my way to work this morning, which definitely caused some backups. So remember to take it slow out on the roads there. And of course, when it comes to the weather, our chief meteorologist, Ted Florendo, always has you covered. Here's Ted for more. Hey, MJ, thank you. Good job out there. And make, make no mistake about it. Just because you see the clear, sunny skies outside right now doesn't mean the roads are not wet because they're still wet. They're still slick. So please, please be careful out there. That's that live look outside right now. Let's go the latest on the radar first over towards the east side up there near the speedway. Some showers along the east side there too. I'd say Sunrise Manor, Lake Las Vegas down towards Sam Boyd Stadium getting some showers there too. But for the west side starting to see some clearing. Even the snow on the mountains starting to clear up just a little bit. We actually had some lightning strikes over towards the far west side around the foothills just east of Lake Mead in 215. Winter storm warnings remain in effect all the way to 5 o'clock tomorrow for the mountains and Lincoln County, Central Nye County. Wind advisory remains in place right now all the way until 5 a.m. We've seen gusts, like I just pinpointed out to you, about uh, 40, even 35 miles per hour. There's a flood watch for you in Kingman, Mojave County. We've had a lot of rain there lately and more saturated ground means we could get some flooding there with more rainfall. Temperatures in the mid high 50s right now. There are your winds in the high 30s and will continue this evening. Your accurate weather headlines, more chances for showers and thunderstorms. Winds will increase even more and it won't feel like spring in the extended forecast. We'll show it to you all coming up. Brian. And Ted, it's not just the roads, all that wild weather causing a lot of delays and cancellations over at the airport. At last check, flight aware shows nearly 515 delays in the last 24 hours, nearly 80 flights canceled. As always, make sure you check your reservation before you leave to the airport. And since we are getting some rain, Brian, the Southern Nevada Water Authority is urging everyone just to shut off your irrigation system for the next week. Cutting back on watering during this cool, rainy time of year saves the valley thousands of gallons of water. And you can also help save on your monthly watering bill as well. Make sure to keep it right here on 8 News Now for all of your breaking weather updates and forecast. Our team has been rated most accurate nine years in a row. Well, the federal government is announcing the designations of new national monuments. Yeah, the White House says this is part of their effort to conserve U.S. lands and waters. Hannah Brandt with the details. Ryan Denise, for decades, Native American tribes have been fighting to protect Avi Kwame. Now, the president is rewarding that fight. Avi Kwame is a desert mountain area in southern Nevada that spans more than half a million acres. It's a place of reverence. It's a place of spirituality. And it's a place of healing. Now, President Biden is designating it as a national monument. The Fort Mojave Indian tribe is applauding the move. It is a place we know as our creation. It is the beginning of our traditional songs. And it is the place that Native nations throughout the Southwest hold sacred. Secretary Deb Holland, who's Native American herself, got emotional while talking about how the Biden administration is making strides for the community. We're incorporating indigenous knowledge and honoring tribes for their role in stewarding our lands and waters since time immemorial. The Biden administration also announced the designation of Kastner Range as a national monument. It's a spot in El Paso, Texas, that used to be a training site for the U.S. Army. Now we'll clear the area of old munitions, create access to the outdoors for communities and parks, and we're going to create spaces that are harder and harder to find. The Biden administration says these announcements move them closer to their goal of conserving 30 percent of U.S. lands and waters by the year 2030. Our country's natural treasures define our identity as a nation. And the Biden administration says their mission is especially urgent as they try to tackle climate change. Our conservation work is so important provides a bridge to our past and to our future. And the president is also creating a marine sanctuary to protect all U.S. waters around the Pacific remote islands. In Washington, D.C., I'm Hannah Brandt, 8 News Now. Now, meantime, the governor released a statement saying his administration has concerns about the designation. He also says he reached out to the White House to talk about potential issues, but he never heard back. Then he went on to say the federal confiscation of more than 500,000 acres of Nevada land is a historic mistake that will cost Nevadans for generations to come. The county also released a statement and it reads in part, we are working to review President Biden's designation to better understand the impact to our region, both in its size as well as to the operations of Harry Reid International Airport. Brian.
Denise, Clark County Schools responding to pressure to be more transparent by unveiling a new online dashboard. Among several things, it'll track attendance, grades, and expulsions. Joshua Peguero joins us in the newsroom now to explain more. Hello, Brian. The district didn't want to give me an answer when asked how much the dashboard will cost. They say this is an effort to keep the public updated constantly on how the district and each of the schools is doing. The district is using COVID relief dollars called ESSER funds, and according to the state, the district has $561 million that it hasn't spent yet. This new dashboard doesn't track violence in the schools, which was the focus of a hearing last week in Carson City. Today, Superintendent Dr. Asus Jara addressed that. We have been working on for quite some time about issues that are in the community that are walking onto our campuses. So this is an overall community challenge for all of us. Um, it's not something that is just owned by the school district, but it is happening in our schools, so we're dealing with it. Now, for anyone interested, the website is currently active for anyone in the public to use. You can see district-wide results for state exams starting in kindergarten. The dashboard is available in three languages, English, Spanish, and Tagalog, and the dish data will be updated after it's gone before the Board of Trustees. Brian? All right, Joshua, thank you. The dashboard, not the only thing top of mind. Apparently, there was a somewhat pointed exchange between the superintendent and members of the media regarding the incident at Durango High School. Now, this is video of that incident between CCSD police and students back in February. Joshua will join us again at 630 to show us what happened. And we are learning more about an attack on a bus that left several people hurt. It happened in the Southwest Valley about 7 o'clock last night near Durango Blue Diamond. Metro Police say 29-year-old Alan McFarland attacked the bus security officer with rocks, used a trash can. By the time police arrived, McFarland was barricaded alone on the bus. Now, after several attempts to get him out, officers and a canine eventually entered. A struggle ensued and they were able to eventually take him into custody. McFarland reportedly bit one of the officers, hit uh, some of the others. They were treated for minor injuries at the hospital. Nevada leading the nation with the most cases of a dangerous fungal infection. According to the CDC, there have been nearly 385 cases of C. auris. It's also known as candida. The fungus can cause deadly infections. It is resistant to standard antifungal drugs. Doctors say it can also be hard to test for. Those who get it are hospitalized long term if they have compromised immune systems. Those with normal immune function do quite well against it. Patients with invasive medical devices are most vulnerable. To learn more about this fungus and find the case count for all 50 states. Follow us on Facebook. Still ahead here tonight, our coverage on rental assistance continues. 8 News now working to try and get some answers for the CHAP program as more Valley residents are on the verge of losing their homes. And a new look at Formula One grandstands will tell you how much a ticket for the newly released West Harmon Zone will set you back. You are watching 8 News now at 5. We are live local now.